Hey guys, this is Damien from Dame Tech, back with another video. In this video, we will review and compare benchmarks between the iPad Pro 2021 and iPad Pro 2020 models. I will also perform a 4K video compression test and view gaming performance results as synthetic benchmarks don't always tell the full story. Last, I will also do a display test, testing the difference between the LCD and mini LED displays. In general, the goal for this video is to provide you all a comprehensive explanation on each device's level of performance and how they compare against each other. Hopefully, this video will help those who are indecisive on what iPad Pro model to purchase. Now, before we jump into results, I want to quickly note that all of the tech jargon used in this video, I added more detailed explanations in the description below. Nevertheless, Starting with 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme 20 minute stress test, which mimics an intensive graphical game, we can see drastic differences in results. Here we can see the iPad Pro 2021 on the right score roughly 40% more in peak performance and 50% more in sustained or throttled performance. Again, this test is designed to show the graphics performance in each of these devices. The M1 chip is clearly ahead the A12Z Bionic chip housed in the iPad Pro 2020 and GPU performance. Now, as we look at Geekbench 5 application, which also tests individually the CPU and GPU performance, we can see already for CPU performance, the iPad Pro 2021 model is again clearly ahead. In single core performance, the iPad Pro 2021 variant is roughly 50% more powerful than the iPad Pro 2020 model. As for multi-core scores, the 2021 model is 55% faster than the iPad Pro 2020 variant. This M1 chip is incredibly fast for a mobile SoC. Now, if we quickly look at the metal scores, i.e. another GPU test, here we can see the iPad Pro 2021 performing roughly 70% faster than the iPad Pro 2020 variant. These synthetic benchmarks definitely show the power of the M1 chip compared to the A12Z Bionic chip housed in the iPad Pro 2020. However, synthetic benchmarks only tell half the story as application limitations, optimization, and or software coding also play a role in device performance. Hence, if we look at more realistic or more so real life tests, starting with Genshin Impact, which is one of the most demanding graphical games for both smartphones and tablets, we can see that performance is quite similar. For the iPad Pro 2020 model, I averaged 59.9 FPS and 60 FPS with the iPad Pro 2021 variant after 11 minutes of testing. Now, I must note the iPad Pro 2021 model did use roughly 58.5% of its GPU, while the 2020 variant used roughly 86.6% of its GPU. Theoretically, this definitely shows that the iPad Pro 2021 model is indeed faster and more efficient. However, there aren't many applications that can really push the M1 SoC to its limit. Thus, in gaming, despite the power gap between the M1 chip and A12Z chip, performance will feel almost the same in the majority of games. Nevertheless, as we move on to the 4K video compression test, this is another realistic test as this mimics a real-life user experience. 4K video compression is a great way to test the SoC as both CPU and GPU components are utilized. For this test, I will use LumaFusion application as this is the most popular editing tool for iOS users. As you can see, both devices share the same 4K footage, and I also decided to add a video filter on the 4K video to further provide additional stress on both SOCs. And here we go.
based on these results, the iPad Pro 2021 model finished roughly two seconds faster than the iPad Pro 2020 variant. Again, like the gaming test, performance isn't that much apart for both devices in the 4K video compression test. Now, one could argue that with more layers of video and or effects, this will surely show the performance gap between the M1 and the A12Z Bionic chip. However, after editing YouTube videos with multiple layers of video on both devices, the performance gap remains minor in this category. Now for the last test, the display test. For this test, I decided to play some HDR content to show the difference in color accuracy and brightness. Now, I must note that I am using the same ESR HD 100% clear glass screen protection for both devices. In addition, I must also note that this camera does not do either screen justice. The blooming effect that you see is indeed the camera. With that being said, even though there is limitations to showing the true colors and brightness of this mini LED display, it is still easy to spot the differences in displays. Black on the LCD panel in the 2020 iPad Pro appears to have a slightly dark blue tint while black is completely black on the mini LED display. The colors also appear more vibrant and bright on the mini LED panel. Personally, editing videos and photos on this mini LED display has definitely made me a fan. This is one of those tests that you just have to see in person. Taking all of this into consideration, like I mentioned in my other video, both iPad Pros are phenomenal. The iPad Pro 2020 is still very much future-proof as it can handle any 2020 application with ease. The iPad Pro 2021 is just pure overkill at this point. I can't make a definitive statement on whether it's worth buying the iPad Pro 2021 until I see what's in store in the upcoming iPad OS 15 being announced in the WWDC event next month. Depending on the software that may come to iPad OS 15, this will determine if this iPad Pro with the M1 chip is worth all the extra money. However, as for the display, if you're a content creator like me, I definitely check out the mini LED display in the iPad Pro 2021. You have to see this in person. This is the best feature in my opinion for the iPad Pro 2021. Nevertheless, thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, you might as well subscribe and hit that notification button for more content like this. I also want to give a shout out to both subscribers and those who have donated to my Patreon page. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. I want to give a special thanks in the descriptions of my videos to the names of those who donated to my Patreon page as an extra way of saying thank you. Please stay safe and see you all next time.